Welcome. I'm Rob Walcott, the co-founder and chairman of the World Innovation Network, or TWIN. And we're here today at Moonlight Studios in Chicago, a fantastic production facility, doing some pre-recording for TWIN Tech 2020. Our tagline at TWIN is never leave serendipity to chance. And honestly, what you're watching right now is a almost completely unplanned segment that in reality, isn't really a segment. Anna and I were preparing for this, and I was working with Brian Stevens, our AV media producer and lead at, from Media Vision. And we said, you know what? Let's get a whole bunch of photos from Twin Past and talk about them and say, where have we been over the past 17 years? Anna, that's a really good question. Where have we been over the I past? I don't know. We've been kind of everywhere. Or actually, I should say, where haven't we been <laughs> over the past true. 17 years? So. True expeditions and globals and dialogues and boat trips and singing competitions. It's been really an extraordinary adventure, much more to come. So Anna and I were gonna be here at this beautiful production facility. We had a few neat photos, so we thought, let's have a conversation. That's right. So Anna, let's have a conversation. Well, look at these photos. <laughs> these, these are amazing. Yeah. Um, because they, they all represent such wonderful events. I mean, you know, floor, the one year we had it in Florida, the year we had dinner on the, on the stage of the Lyric Opera here the in Lyric Chicago. Lyric Opera, yeah. You know, it's just, it's been an amazing journey. I know you've been involved with this for 17 years. At this 2000, all started 17 years ago. The initial idea was 2002. Okay. Uh, I was a okay. professor, uh, actually at the time I was a postdoc student. Wow. At the you Kellogg like School of Management. You were like 12. I was, I was, uh, I, I won't say my age. <laughs> Um, but I was a good deal younger than I am now, and I, I had just finished my PhD at the McCormick School of Engineering at Northwestern, and I, I'm thankful to still have a great affiliation with, with the McCormick School and Dean, Dean Julio Otino there. Um, and I had just moved to Kellogg to work with Mohan Sani, and I had this idea to start something called the Kellogg Innovation Network at the time. Right. And, and we didn't know what it would be, and Mohan said, well, that sounds pretty good, let's try it. And so he said, what do you think it should be? I said, I don't know, let's bring some execs together to see what they want, and that's how it was born. So it's evolved enormously over, over those years. Obviously, uh, two years ago, we spun out of Kellogg with everybody's blessing. It's been uh, a freeing experience to allow us to take it in many new directions. Um, but going back in history, some of the points you already made, that picture over there, that's actually not a performance on the stage of the Lyric Opera of Chicago, the second largest main stage opera in the country. But that's all of us seated at rounds yeah, for we're dinner. Having, we're all having dinner. Dinner on great. the stage. That was wonderful. It was, I, and I remember that. And, and it was, um, I remember you sang. Yes, I did take that opportunity. Yeah, I, 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 do, I, do, I do remember <laughs> you saying. Yeah. To sing on the stage of the Lyric like. Opera. In fact, singing is one of the threads that I remember when I first got involved with this organization because yeah. you and I met back in 2005. Yes. And we met because a mutual friend called me and said, I want to introduce you to this guy named Rob Wolcott. He's looking for a speaker yeah. for an event up in Mi Michigan. That's right, at it Herman Miller. It was a Herman Miller event. Herman Miller. And I said, what does he want? He said, he's looking for a speaker to talk about R&D and marketing, someone who has run both R&D and marketing. Right. He said, and you're the only one I know who's done that. And so I, I phoned you. I still remember where I was when I made the phone call. I was in a parking lot at a CVS in Sugarland, Texas, and I'm talking to you on the phone. And, and you had just moved to Texas. I had just moved point. to Texas. And I chatted with you and you said, would love for you to come up to Michigan to this event. And so I did. And I prepared this speech, and I remember walking up and seeing first row in the audience, Phil Kotler. Right, Professor Phil Kotler. Professor so, Phil Kotler. So and for I, those of you who might not know, all seven of you out there who don't know, <laughs> Phil is the father of modern marketing. Yes. He, years ago, everybody's marketing textbook is Phil Kotler. And maybe I neglected to mention to you, you that- Maybe you did. But now look, to be, you're being modest, <laughs> Anna. I mean, you, you had not too long before uh, stepped down as the global chief marketing officer of BP. Right. You had led the, uh, the rebranding beyond petroleum, the Helios which was still a stunning transformation of any company. And, and, and by the way, we, I think it's, all, uh, it's obvious to everyone now, if BP had stayed on that course that Lord if Brown, only, if only. you and Lord Brown had set, they'd be 
far better shape today. And but they're way back ahead. on it. They're back on it. They're now. back on it. So, now. you know, good ideas often have a 20 year gestation period. That's, that's what I true. Say. So that could be what it is. And they're, they're back on it. And, and that's, a, that's a big deal. And we wish them all the best. Absolutely. Because BP has been a part of, uh, of, of TWIN over the years as yes. well. Um, very much a part of it. So, uh, so you so came. I saw, so I saw Phil Kotler yeah. sitting in the front row. And I kind of freaked out because he did write my textbook. And I thought, oh, yes. my God, I'm speaking to this guy who wrote my textbook. And you're speaking about marketing. And I'm speaking about marketing. <laughs> it's like, whoa. OK. So I remember that. And it, and it went well. And, and yeah. Phil even clapped at the end, which was really yeah. nice. And then that night, back to the singing thing, we got on a boat. Yes, we did. There was a boat ride. And on that boat ride, Kevin Burns and Alan Landry yep. got up and sang. That's right, who were both with Raytheon at the time. We were both at Raytheon at the uh, time. Colonel Landry, who's still an a, a intimate part of, of Twin. One of my dear friends. Every yeah. year, great friend, uh, one, of the, one of the great uh, coaches. Yeah. He's taken his military experience out to be a coach. And then Kevin Burns, who was with us for a number of years at, at Twin, surprised everyone. Amazing as voice. a retired four-star general. <laughs> And he gets up on the boat. They had a karaoke machine yeah, on the boat. Yeah, they did. Conveniently. And he says, he said, oh, I'll do that. And he got up and he was fantastic. He was fantastic. And so I thought, <laughs> I remember thinking, you know what? This is a group that is worth hanging out with. Yeah. And so 15 years later, here I am sitting yeah. here looking, all, looking at all these amazing pictures. It's really, yeah. it's really something. Well, let's, let's try a couple more. So we have the Lyric Opera. Yeah. And by the way, we were so grateful to Dave Ormisher, who's the, chair, the outgoing now chairman of the Lyric Opera of right. Chicago for, for being a host for us. And it was a stunning experience to look from the stage out at the house because it's one of the, one of the most stunning 19th century performance venues in the world. And you get a sense for the drama that the yeah. performers are trying their best to ignore right. while they're on right. the stage. So, I mean, that was a real, really different lens to look at the world. It was wonderful. And then you also mentioned the New World Center. So the picture up there, which you can see yours truly and, yeah. uh, and Miss Catalano sitting there on the couch with uh, three other of our friends. Uh, regular, the, regular twinnies. Regular twinnies, whatever that means. The, right. the nefarious Mr. Toby Redshaw, who was our founding chairman. Right. Um, who was at Motorola years ago when he was our founding chairman, back when Motorola was doing really big things, yeah. and is now in charge of 5G for Verizon. Verizon. Right. Is still with us every year. Right. And then Jonathan Wilson, who is, is the world's leading expert in Islamic marketing, yeah. so halal marketing and he's all. He's amazing. And he'll be back with us this year for Twin Tech. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's going to do a great. small, intimate conversation with people. I can't wait. And then, of course, Ted Wright, who will also be doing one of those sessions. Crazy uh, Ted. Crazy Ted, we Fizz, love crazy Ted. Fizz, word of mouth marketing, the real word of mouth marketing. Yep. So those five people are still together. And this event in 2016, if, if anybody can see the other, the other picture down over there, gives you a sense of the drama of this, of this venue, yeah. the New World Center. Howard Herring is the president there and was uh, such a gracious host. And he's been back with us a couple of times yeah, as well. Yeah, I saw him last year. He was here at the year. Harris Theater. Yes, he was. And that picture over there, Anna, you know who that is at the oh, stage yeah. of the Harris Theater? Yeah. yeah Marshall Davis awesome. Jones. He's, a, he's wonderful. Yeah. He's just brought so much creativity to this group. Well, and tell everybody, what, who is this Marshall well, Davis Marshall, Jones? Marshall guy? is an amazing, he's, he is a poet. Yes. He is absolutely, he does the most amazing thing. So he will sit through the entire twin event, the, the twin global event, uh, uh, the three day event that we have. And at the end of it, he does a rap for us. He right. wraps it up with the most beautiful poetry. And everyone is just amazed yes. at how he does it. Because, I mean, he, he, t he, t he told me, we talked about the process a bit, there are certain modules or things that he can bring into the situation yeah. so he knows how to use them already. But, but that's only a small piece of it because yeah. you're sitting there listening and you hear quotes from people. Yeah. Uh, from that exact from event, that event, you right. hear him referring to a funny thing that happened in one of the sessions. You hear him mentioning someone's scarf that they're wearing, whatever it is, yeah. during his remarks. So he really is cooking this up in his head Absolutely. during the event and Absolutely. getting up with no notes. No notes. Absolutely performing. no notes. I don't know how he does it. It's absolute genius. But it's, it is a part of this organization and part of the event that makes it so special because Things like that don't happen at any yeah. other events. Yeah. They just don't. Very rarely. Very they really rarely. don't. Well, I mean, one of the most gratifying things for me 
in addition to just we just like having our friends together a couple times a year right Right. but to be honest but one of the most gratifying things for me is when i hear from our twinians that they now are in touch with each other on a regular basis they're good for like you and al landry have become inseparable friends and marshall met kareem sharif Mm. a phenomenal uh, investor from uh dubai Uh, he and his fund invest all over Africa and and uh, India and the Middle East. And they're now in touch every couple of weeks. That's wonderful. They become good friends as a result of twin. And without twin, they probably would never have met each other. It's likely they would and, never have met. And that's the amazing thing about twin is that it it mashes people together that normally would not come into contact we do get a lot of mashing we get get (laughs) there's a lot of mashing it becomes a big mess it is but it's it's a fun mess it's wonderful so where else do we have oh you know who's that guy in the middle of the screen oh that's the that's the north and south pole guy that's the north and south pole guy all right so uh also known as robert Robert swan Swan. very good you got it (laughs) that you heard it robert you're the north and south pole guy of course that's you know it's like a rorschach test right you see a picture and what do you think of first well but uh Robert spoke, and I think he was introduced to us by Stephanie Walcott, my sister, who's been involved since the very beginning. But uh, he came and spoke the first time, and my firm, Clario, has hired him probably 10 times with our various clients, and we recommend him as much as possible. And Emmett Keefe, who's part of Twin at Insight Partners, he's had uh, Robert out to speak for events. And there must be in the 20 times I've seen Rob Swan speak probably only one time there wasn't a standing ovation. Oh, he's just a must amazing. And I got to tell you, I don't know what those people's problem was, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. So, I mean, amazing. And now his son, Barney. Yeah. Barney he's, took a walk to the South he's Pole doing with it. him. He's yeah. doing it. Yes. Yes. Have you gone on a trip with him yet? I haven't yet. Stephanie I haven't, has. I haven't either. He's been talking to me about yeah. wanting me to go to the to Antarctica with him, and I'm not sure if I'm Well, up for it. so here, here's a neat Stephanie, my sister has gone. Uh huh. Uh, Chris Gould, an executive at Exelon, one of our sponsors okay. and a Twinian now He's for gone. probably four years. He met Rob at Twin and said, oh my gosh, uh, in one of his roles as head of sustainability for Exelon. Okay. And he said, I've got to go to Antarctica. Wow. So he went, went to Antarctica. And so people meet opportunities yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and, and people like Rob Swan, I mean, it's just never leave serendipity to chance. He's one man walking serendipity. He is. I, he is, absolutely. Amazing. He is an so, amazing guy. So what else do we have here? Well, you know where that venue up, up in the corner there was. Oh, yeah. That's recognize in, that? That was, our, that was our first lecture room. Yes. our first our first lecture hall. In, in the um, business school at, at Kellogg. Right, yeah. Northwestern University, Kellogg still, School I of Management. I actually still miss that room. Yeah, it was I a good I miss room. that room because the thing I liked about it is, is it had tables in front of us yeah. and I could put my notebook and write. It was yeah. easier to take notes. It's very comfortable. Very it's comfortable. limiting in terms of space because yeah. the most people you can have in it is 220. We, we grew out of it. We grew out of it. We and then when uh, the first two years, we just had a couple of posters on the wall and right. a little bit. Of, but then we added lighting. And what you see here is a lot of a lot of production. Right. But um, Brian Stevens and his team really juiced it up. Yeah, they did. Which was great. But we just we just couldn't get yeah. the twin in there anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know what? Things change. You That's grow. Right. You move on. That's right. And so what else do we have? Well, Spe- you know, the middle picture here yeah. is, is, is from that? Etudes Night. Yes, that's I right. I mean, Etudes has been one of the highlights of, of Twin. I it's mean, kind of a jewel in the crown in a way. Kind of. Um, and, you know, our, our good friend and Jeffrey. We've, we've been uh, with him for years. He's been Where would us. we be without Jeffrey Ernstoff yeah. and the genius that he brings to our, to our program? And we're all much better for his now wife, Sonia Komen. Oh. Yeah, uh, who <laughs> absolutely. I'll well, never forget the first twin Sonia came to, and Jeffrey was so much calmer. I walked yeah. up to her and I said, "Stick around. Yeah, don't you leave. He's yeah. he's great. He's Brooklyn great show you. business. Took oh, a deep breath and absolutely. relaxed a little bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> sure. But it was it was neat too. We went to we went to their wedding out we in did. Connecticut. We did. Yeah. But you know the the thing that Jeffrey has brought through Etudes for us is this this really important perspective of the importance of the arts in our lives and the importance of the arts in innovation and how it fires up a different part of our brain yeah. that, that needs to get fired up. And, yeah. and I'm so glad we've been able to retain that. I'm really gonna miss it this year. 
yeah. in the form that it, it normally right. is because we can't meet in person. But I look forward to the next eight big etudes event right. because it's always one of the things that is, is a not to miss. Yeah, so what, what Anna's talking about is we, we're definitely going to have the arts as part of uh, Twin Tech this year. But etudes is etudes. And we felt that not everything needs to port online. Right. We're going to keep that in the terrestrial space. We're going to keep that in that, that warm physical space of a theater or, or a dining hall or an opera house or wherever we an have an in-person place. An in-person right. place. Right. Um, but we're going to have the arts infused in Twin Tech this year. So, for instance, we're going to have, uh, or depending on when you're watching this, we have had a discussion with our, our great friend Moran Cerf, neuroscientist right. at Northwestern, and one of his colleagues, uh, Suzanne Dicker from uh, New York University, who's a senior research scientist in psychology, and also a performance artist. Mm. And they're going to talk about the science of performance and experience. So what is neuroscience telling us about this? And then we're going to be featuring three different artists. Uh, they're going to share a piece of video content of their work, which is very different than performing live, right. and talk about why they think this worked, what the experience of sharing something digitally is compared to doing it live right. uh, on screen or in person. And so we're going to explore the topic, still bring in the arts, but I want to make sure that we're looking forward to that in-person etudes experience in 2021, God willing. Yep, I hope so, because there's nothing quite like it. So um, we've only missed one, I think, and that is that one in the corner there is a tableau from uh, Twin Global 2018 yes. at the Museum of Contemporary Art. Right. And that happens to be with uh, Peter Boris, who, who is one of the leaders of Pace Gallery, a, right. a global contemporary art gallery. And we had a conversation about why he's in the art space, what it means to him. And we, we clicked through a number of images. Yeah. One of the exciting things to me was that image of the Academy, it's called, this is a Renaissance representation right. of Aristotle and Socrates and Plato and a bunch of uh, uh, Thomas Aquinas. Who's so they who? weren't, who's who, but they right. weren't they all weren't, alive at the same together. time. They weren't together, right, right. And it's one of my favorite pieces, and Peter had actually selected it to mm. share. So there was a real synchronicity there um, in that segment. But that year, 2018, was our first year having graduated from Kellogg. Yes. Um, excited, but not really sure how things are going to come together. And I think they've come together. And it went well. It, it did. went well. It did. Thanks to you and so many other. Well, of our so teams. many. There's there have been so many members of the core team that have helped pull this thing together Absolutely. every year, and yeah. and it does take a team effort. But you know, Rob, without without you, this would not have happened. And one thing that strikes me is that nobody nobody ever interviews you at these at these events. You interview a lot of people, but nobody ever ever interviews you. So let me ask you. I suppose that's true. It is true. Are I'm, you I'm, taking never, the microphone away I from me? I am here. I'm taking the mic. Okay. All right. I, you know, let me just ask you. Is is this what you envisioned when you started? You know, when you said you started out, you didn't know where it was going to go. Did you have any idea this is what Twin would become? No, of course not. Uh, but, but in that sense, I, what I did know is I didn't know what it could become. Right. Um, what, what I had in mind, which has happened, you know, my hope, my aspiration at the time was, I just wanted a mechanism to bring more interesting people, meaningful, ethical, and that's an important point, people together on a regular basis, because I think it makes life better. I think it makes life more exciting, more interesting. And I didn't know what it would look like. Um, honestly, I started with the corporate community because it's something I kind of knew, I'd understood, right. like yourself. Yeah. Uh, I'd been working with, I've never worked for a large corporation, but I've worked with them in various right. ways as a consultant or a researcher or a partner or a speaker or whatever throughout my career. So I started with what I knew, which were corporate leaders. And I, I said, if we were to put a group like this together, what would be valuable to you? And they gave us a bunch of ideas. In fact, uh, Toby Redshaw was there that day. Um, th there were a dozen executives at that meeting with Mohan Sani and myself at the Allen Center at Kellogg in 2000 and February 2003. Okay. And of those dozen executives, uh, seven of them ended up being deeply involved over the long term and are still with us today. Wow. So you think about like Mark Karasek, uh, Blythe McGarvey, right. so the Phil Strips. I right. mean, think of a long list of people yeah. that are still with us today. That's amazing. That really, really is neat. amazing. It's really good. But I didn't know about any of this other stuff. 
Yeah. It's 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 inc but, it, but it's incredible when you when you pull a group like this together. And and the thing that's really neat about Twin is it's not a group that that gets together to pass out their business cards. Yeah. It's not a group that's there to promote themselves. There it's actually a group of people that truly want to learn from one another. Yeah. And truly want to expand their horizons. And I, I give you a lot of credit for creating that culture of of, of being of, of a tremendous amount of humility in spite of a lot of the accomplishments that individual members of Twin have. I mean, it's an impressive group of people in terms of what they've accomplished. Yeah. And, um, but when they, come, when they come to Twin, those all get pushed to the side yeah. and everyone is just a human being, which is, yeah. which is just wonderful. It's really not. And you know, the very few cases over our 17 years where someone ends up there that really doesn't, maybe has a, a serious ego problem yeah. or. There have been a few, not, very few, not Very many. few, not and many. the thing is, we've never had to do much about it because they naturally just. They self-select. They leave, they go away. Yeah, they do. And that's fine. Yeah. You know, there's somewhere else for them. Yeah. Uh, but with us, people, people see the modus operandi and they get hip to it pretty fast. Yeah. Really you know, and speaking of, Anna, um, some people who've been with us, I, I, I don't have a lot of pictures because this was all, like I said, last uh -huh. minute, I think like yesterday. But um, I did find a couple. One in particular, I'd like to share um, the picture of our very first keynoter ah. at the very first global event, which was ah. 2009. Okay. And here he is. Ah. So that's Brian Sparling uh, from the uh, United States military, Southern Command. And this is Juan Manuel Santos. So uh, Juan Manuel Santos, you'll recall, was the Minister of Defense of the country of Colombia at the time, uh, brought by Twinny and Pablo Restrepo. Uh, he made the introduction. And of course, after- He got a big promotion. After that, he got a bit of a, <laughs> the people of Colombia gave, gave him, him a promotion. promotion. He became the president of <laughs> right. Colombia, right. and then uh, and then later on won the Nobel Peace Prize. So I like to tell all of our aspiring speakers, look, come here, you'll become the president, and you'll win the <laughs> Nobel Peace Prize. That's so, a promise, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that uh, that was a pivotal moment for us. And and uh, if you if you remember back at that time, 2008, we're planning for 2009, and what happened? The global financial crisis, the whole crumbled. financial system fell apart, right. and we still had to raise all the money and go out and figure out how to make this happen, and we and did. We did. Yeah. And you know what? That guy and also Admiral James Stavridis, who yeah. also spoke, they're friends, that year really made it happen for us. They yeah, came. They, 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 it was the people in the room that made twin, but the fact that Juan Manuel and Jim were there sort of created an energy for yeah, us in did. our very first year. It did. And, and it's kind of, it's carried through to it today. Really, it really has. Yeah. It really has. So we have another picture, uh, a very, very important photo that I'd like to, to go to now. Um, oh, my God. And now, who is that? Well, it's me, and it's yeah. Peter. And that's Peter Bryant, our good friend, uh, Kiwi, yeah. resident Kiwi at Twin and co-founder. And that is Anna Catalano that's me. That's at her very first Twin event. Wow. Which was in Michigan in at Michigan. Herman Miller in 2005. Wow. And this, you see that look on her face. I'm that's stunned. a look I'm lost. of fear. I'm like, oh my God. Because Phil Kotler is in front <laughs> speaking at this point, And she's thinking, I've got to follow that. What have I gotten myself into? That's great. That's great. So anyway, but, you know, I just I found this. It, it's great because that picture does, does represent a lot of what, what this organization is about. I mean, Peter is one of my close friends now as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we have made really close friends yeah. with people we have met in this organization. And, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's, it's a very special group. It yeah. really is a special group. Well, we have talked about a number of times just, you know, we have these big events. They're not big by event standards. Yeah. They limit it to 400 people, so there's intimacy. But it takes so much time and effort, and we've sort of fantasized about the notion of saying, let's just take, you know, 50 of us to a ski chalet in, in yeah, uh, Lake Tahoe and have just have it. a really nice little... I think, you know, maybe next year, as things start to rise from the ashes of COVID, uh, I think maybe we should plan something small in the mountains somewhere. I think with that'd be just great. Just a small subset and take stock. I think that'd be great. And not worry much about the program. Yeah. And just not leave serendipity to chance. I think that's a great idea. Great. Anything else you'd like to chat about? No, other than, you know, as you say, to the future. Let's keep going. To the future. Okay, so headline in 10 years. Okay. You, you and I and Peter and everybody are looking back at this. What do, what do, what do we say about 
this experience 10 years from now? We say, can we believe what has happened in the last 27 years? 27 years. And I say we're going to say, what's the next 10 years? There you go. Always. Great. Anna, thanks so much. Thank you, Ryan. And if, and if it weren't a COVID crisis, I'd give you a big hug. Right yeah, now. I know. But we can't do that. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. That was great.